Hi, this is Mike Ruane of Revelation Software, and today I'd like to show you some of the new features built into the System Editor++ as found in Open Insight 9.0 and 9.01. The System Editor++ can be found by choosing Tools, System Editor, or by clicking on the System Editor++ button as found on the Open Insight toolbar. The System Editor++ main menu is very similar to what we found in earlier versions of Open Insight, and the System Editor++ is based upon the Scintilla project, which is a free source code editor. If you look at the main menu, we'll have File and options for New Store Procedure, Window Events, which is used in conjunction with the new Form Designer, Record, Insert, or OS File. The OS file is because of the enhanced functionality we have with the WebOI product, and we'll be working with HTML and JavaScript files. Open opens the same group of file types. We have close, delete for deleting non-source code records, all of our save options, our print options, and our most recently used list. Underneath edit, we have the ability to undo, and it's a multi-level undo, which works correctly. We have cut, copy, paste, and delete, select all, uh, shifting the code left or right, converting case, which will convert from lower to correct case to uppercase, commenting or, uncom com commenting or uncommenting an entire block, and the ability to toggle or clear bookmarks. Underneath view, we can see the toolbar, which is this button bar and the labels there. Line numbers, when a record or program appears. The ability to view values for multi-valued records, we can explode them into different lines. To fold and unfold code, so we can collapse if-then-else statements and such. The ability to look at tabbed panes, and here is one of our tabs. And finally, the ability to go to TCL. Underneath search, we have find, find next, find previous, and replace. We have our global replace, which lets us find a string and a replacement that we get to specify the table, whether or not we should work with the entire word and whether it should be case sensitive. Once we click on find, and once they are found, we have the ability to recompile to replace the code. And in each procedure, we have the individual lines down here. We can decide which ones we should like to select as opposed to which records we like to select. We also have the ability to go to a line number. <coughs> Go to the next error or the next bookmark, and the ability to jump to a label or return from this jump when we're working inside of a program. We now support macros, which lets us run, load a macro and run it, or record a new macro and save it. Under utility, we have the ability to format the program with indentations uh, or code templates, which are complete chunks of code that we can use in our programs. Underneath options, we have the font. We can choose the font and increase or decrease its size. Specify the width of our tab stops, look at our keyword configuration, and the keyword configuration uh, for our basic plus keywords has a list of the keywords, and the user can type them in any case and would be converted to that particular case. Users have also begun to use shortcuts like SP and changes to set property. For these basic keywords coloring, we support a foreground color, background color, bold, italic, and underline, and any combination of those five for keywords comments, quoted strings, and labels. We no longer support separate coloring for the debug keyword. Which records will be colorized? Well, sysprox is always colored, but you can add different table names to this list. We support uh, any table you have, and currently I'm running BP, sample BP, and OI precompiled code. As I said before, because we're working with these OS files, which to HTML, we can also set different colors for our default text, our tags, quotes, attributes, comments, etc. And the same for JavaScript. Also underneath options, we have the ability to automatically close our braces. In our window, we can cascade tile arrange icons in our help. So to create a new store procedure, I'll just click on this new button here. And here I have a new store procedures, and I'll call it subroutine, sub R-O-U-T-I-N-E Mike. Void, and you can see that it closed the parentheses for me automatically. If I know I want to do a xlate, I'll say that a equals xlate. And as soon as I type in the open parentheses, our tooltips kick in. From this tooltip, I can see that xlate has one, two, three, four required parameters and a fifth optional one. So the first one is table name, vux. And the key will be 123, and I'll bring field number 5 back, and quote x quote. And you'll see that, again, it closed the parentheses for me automatically. 
So the code tips are available and they can be extended. So if you have your own built-in functions and procedures that you'd like to build with this, you're capable of doing so. I'll highlight this whole thing and I'll erase it. And I'll go underneath utilities and I'll go to code templates. I mentioned earlier that code templates are pre-built chunks of code that we can choose from quickly that'll help us make our programs in a more productive manner. For example, if I just wanted to put in a program header, I have something here called RTI program header. I click on that, I click on OK, and it builds the header for me automatically. I can backspace this. Underneath the utilities and code templates, I have one called RTI program shell. I'll choose that one. And here I'm prompted for a file name to use, and I'll enter books. Click on the OK button, and you'll see that a program is built for me automatically. If I scroll back up to the top, you'll see I have a subroutine name, the username, the date that it was done, and a shell where the name books was put in for me automatically. The messages have error checking built into them. So on the else clause, we call the OI open error message. We have go to statements. Uh, for example, go to terminate. If I double click on here, it's going to ask me if I want to jump to that label called terminate. I'll click on OK. So now I've been brought down, and I'll scroll this down for you. I've been brought down to the terminate label, and I could do whatever I needed to do in my debugging here, working on the program. And then if I press Alt-R, return to line 15, I'll say yes. You'll see that jumps me right up to line 15 where I first jumped down. This program also shows me an example of how I can work with a code folding. The open else end is a nice little logical chunk that we shut down. It can be minimized, so I can click on this and it minimizes it for me. Uh, the same thing with the loop repeat. I can expand these and within this loop, I can decrease it. So that's a way of making the programs look a little bit smaller in the, in the window, but you can still do your work fairly effectively. Uh, we can open up uh, new programs, and this is our new open store procedure dialog box where I can either type in the name myself, I can do a select filter, so I can select sysprox with names containing whatever, or I could just type in the name of the program, such as attach underscore table. And I'll click on the OK button over here, and then you'll see that I have my new uh, attach table here, my new store procedure there. Uh, now when we have multiple programs open, uh, then I can do a uh, let me move this around here, do a Shift F9, and it'll uh, program all these. There exist, I'll say yes. And what you can't see, but I'll move the pane down to the bottom, is that in the status line of the editor, and it tells me um, if compilation was successful or if it was not, and what sort of errors that we occurred, we encountered. If I open up the routine called INET WebList, Uh, and I'll click on OK, and this program is now open. And what I'll do is I'll move this up here. I'll press F9 to compile just this one program. And we go down to the bottom here, and I've got some suspected unassigned variables. However, if I put errors into this program automatically, because as a program, I would never make such errors, I can make some changes like this. I'll press F9. And you'll see that I get a couple errors, and they're highlighted down in the status bar. So I'm at level, web list, line 21, illegal statement termination. So if I double click on it, it brings me to that line. I can say equate CRLF to, OK, so I'm missing a parenthesis there. And I can get rid of that spare. <clears throat> and the same thing here. Uh, I can tell that it's an N. So I press F9. So that is helpful in letting you find out the programs. And it'll let you see the multiple errors all at once. The editor plus uh, plus is a vast improvement to the editors that we've had in the past. Uh, we've done a lot of work with this. Uh, we're very happy with the features that are built into it. Uh, they've been enhanced based upon feedback from our users and our developers. We use it in-house here tremendously. We hope that it will be as productive for you to use as it is for us. Thank you very much for your time.